So this video that I'm making, first of all, you could stop me. I'll re-record if you need, uh, if you have any questions. But this video is specifically tailored to this seventh period class, right? Um, the absolute worst question that we performed on was number five, which technically doesn't mean anything to you because the, the questions were scrambled up. But this was an absolute value uh, inequality, and it was multiple choice, and... 15 of us got it right, 19 got it wrong. So the majority of us got this wrong. So I think it's worth reviewing so you guys could understand it. Um, I hope we remember that solving an absolute value, inequality, or equation, you have to first make sure that it's isolated. What does that mean? That if you had a times two right here, you'd have to divide by two, right? But we don't have that. Or if you had like a minus three back here, you'd have to add three, add three. But we don't have that. It's already isolated for us. So once it's isolated, then you could jump right into your positive and negative situations. And the positive situation is writing it exactly the way it is without the absolute values. So the same exact thing, that's a 5x minus 10 is greater than 5. And the negative situation is the same exact thing, 5x minus 10 without the absolute values, but we have to change Flip that inequality and change the sign or signs if you had more than one term of the right side of the inequality, okay? So we are going to rewrite it exactly the same, 5x minus 10, but we're going to change the greater than to a less than, and we're going to change that positive 5 to a negative 5. I hope everybody understands that and remembers that. So now we're going to solve both. We're going to get rid of the minus 10 by adding 10, adding 10. We're going to have a 5x is greater than 15. And that's really saying 5 times x is greater than 15. So the way to get rid of multiplication of 5 is division of 5. And what you do to one side, do to the other side. And we have x is greater than 3. Okay? And now let's do the other one. Same deal. You want to get rid of that minus 10 to get x by itself plus 10. What you do to one side, do to the other, plus 10. You can end up with 5x is less than 5. And that's really saying 5 times x is less than 5. So the way to get rid of that would be to divide by 5, divide by 5. You do not flip the inequality symbol because you're not dividing by a negative. That's x is less than 1. So we have those two answers. Now, on every compound inequality, or not a compound inequality, absolute value inequality, you have those two answers, and you need to graph them so you could see whether you're going to write them together as a compound inequality with the x in the middle or whether you're just going to rewrite them separate with the word or. Okay. So remember, if... The areas are together, then it's going gonna, it's gonna to be written together. If the areas are apart, um, you're going to right, keep it apart with the word or. Not only that, we should also know how to work backwards whenever we see a, a number line and go back to the absolute value uh, inequality. Um, and back when we did that, if the areas were apart, it was a great tor then symbol. So you should already know that these areas are going to be apart. But let's just double check that. So right here we have uh, the smaller number 1 on the right side, the bigger number 3 on the right side. X is greater than 3, greater than is to the right. X is less than 1, less than is to the left. These areas are apart, so we're not going to put them together. We're going to keep them apart with the word or, okay? So we're just simply going to type in X is greater than 3 or X is less than 1. That's what you would type in for full credit. You could also type in x is less than 1 or x is greater than 3. It's the same difference. It doesn't matter which one you put first. But I guess the important thing to know on this one is that if for some reason you graph your answers and they end up being together, like let's say like this and like that, and let's say the number was 1 and 3, then you would have to write them together as a compound inequality with x in the middle Smaller number on the left side, bigger number on the right side with less than symbols. So if they're together, you write them together as a compound inequality. If they're apart, you keep them apart with the word or. Obviously, on this question, this did not happen. You're not going to write it together. The areas are apart, so you keep those answers apart with the word or. Here's one that we got 47% on. That's pretty horrible as well. And this one was an evaluation problem, okay? About half of us got it right, half of us got it wrong. So there, this is no equation. It's just an expression. All you have to do is rewrite it. The absolute value of 1 minus 7b, close absolute value, minus absolute value 
of A. So I am going to plug in my A value of negative 2 right where the A is at. I want to plug in my B value of 4 where the B was at, right? The B was right here. That's 4. There it is. The A is right here. That's negative 2. There it is. And then from there, you got to do the math. So on the inside, right here, we have 1 take away 7 times 4. Obviously, we're going to multiply before subtracting. So when I multiply uh, 7 times 4, that's 28. And you still have the 1 minus right in front of it. And it's still inside the absolute values. So 1 take away 28 is negative 27. And that's still inside of the absolute values. Which means that this will be a positive 27 at the end of it all. Okay. And now we go to the other one, and you do not change the minus minus to plus plus. That's incorrect. That's only with parentheses. Right here, you have to go absolute value of negative 2. That's 2. And then you could bring down the minus sign. Okay. So what we really have is 27, and then bring it down, minus 2. And 27 minus 2 is 25. So all you had to do was type in 25 to get this uh, uh, full credit. Whoops. I apologize. All right, here's another horrible one. About half of us got this right, right? It only had 53% accuracy. 47% of the people got it wrong. And this is another absolute value inequality. Oh, yeah, that Apparently we struggled a lot with absolute value inequalities. All you have to do is isolate it, get it by itself. And then after that, do a positive and negative situation. And then after that, you graph it to see if you're gonna write it together as a compound inequality or apart with the word or. Now. As I walked around yesterday during the test, I saw that some students were multiplying the two in, and that's not good. When I say isolate, it's telling you to get rid of things, not to multiply it in there, right? You want to get rid of everything except the absolute value. So it's kind of like if you had 2x, a big giant x, minus 6. If you had 2x minus 6, what's the first thing you get rid of? The minus 6. So we're going to get rid of that minus 6 by doing plus 6 plus 6. So we will have 2 absolute value, 7x plus 7, close absolute value, is less than or equal to 8 plus 6 is 14. And we still have this multiplication of 2. Don't actually multiply it, right? We want to isolate the absolute value. We want to get rid of the multiplication. How do you get rid of something? You do the opposite. The opposite of multiplying is dividing. What you do to one side, do to the other side, it cancels out. Now it's isolated. The absolute value of 7x plus 7, close absolute value. You don't flip it. It stays because we didn't divide by a negative. Is less than or equal to 7. Okay, so now that it's isolated, now I jump to a positive and negative situation. Positive, negative, squiggly line. And then we want to write the positive situation. How? By rewriting it exactly the way it is without the absolute values. What about the negative situation? Uh, you flip the inequality and you change the sign of the right side. And if there's more than one term, you change all the signs on the right side. Anyways, for that positive situation, you're going to write 7x plus 7 is less than or equal to 7. For the negative situation, same thing, 7x plus 7, you got to flip that inequality greater than or equal to, and instead of a positive 7, you're going to change it to a negative 7. And then you graph, I mean, not graph, you solve them and then graph them. So the one on the left, you get rid of that plus 7 by subtracting 7, subtracting 7, and you will end up with 7x is less than or equal to 0. How do you get rid of the multiplication of 7 in front of the x? By doing division of 7, division of 7. So you have x is less than or equal to nothing. If you have nothing and divide it into 7 pieces, it's still nothing. x is less than or equal to 0. And then you go for the other one. Likewise, get rid of the 7 by subtracting 7, subtracting 7, you're going to end up with 7x is greater than or equal to negative 14. That's 7 times x. So the way to get rid of multiplication of 7 in front of the x is to divide by 7. We do to one side, do to the other. You don't flip it. It stays. You didn't divide by a negative. Negative 14 divided by positive 7 is negative 2. So we have those two answers. The thing is, we need to determine whether we are going to write them together or apart. Okay? So we go to a number line. Smaller number on the left side, which happens to be the negative 2. Bigger number on the right side, which happens to be 0. I want to graph this one in red. X is less than or equal to 0. It's a solid dot at 0. Less than is this way. 
And the other one, x is greater than or equal to negative 2. Solid dot at negative 2. Greater than is to the right. So this is an area that's together. Now, the only reason we graph is to determine if we're going to keep these answers as they are, separate with the word or, or if we're actually going to write them together as a compound inequality. Because the areas are together, we're going to write them as a compound inequality written together. And it's super easy to do because you already have the negative 2 on the left side, the 0 on the right side. All you have to do is put the x right there in the middle, and you will always have less than symbols. Now, because this was a less than or equal to to start, or it had the or equal to to start, these are going to be or equal to's as well. And there's your answer, okay? So let's go back and just uh, see the multiple choice options. You see, yeah, half of us knew that it was written together because the areas were together. But some of us kept them apart with the word or, right? Some of us just picked one of them, which is not the case. Some of us, a lot of us said none of these are correct. Only seven people. I mean, so yeah, I hope we understand this one now. Let's go for another. Another 53% accuracy. 47% of us got this wrong. And this is an absolute value equation. Apparently in this class, it was a, the real weak point, the solving absolute value equations and inequalities. I don't want to. Okay, so let's go down to here and let's, let's do this one together. Whoa, what happened? My bad. Okay, so you want to isolate it. What do you do? Bless you. Divide by three. Divide by negative three. You don't distribute it in. That's not getting rid of it. Getting rid of it is to do the opposite of what you see here, the opposite of multiplying by negative three. We do to one side, do to the other. You're going to end up with absolute value 4x minus 9, close absolute value, uh, is equal to uh, negative 8, right? Now, if you went on and did the positive situation and the negative situation, you're technically doing excess work that's not necessary. The reason I say that is because when you have the absolute value isolated and it equals a negative number, you know that that's an impossibility. Right? It can't be a negative number. The absolute value of something has to be positive. Right? So right there, you could just stop and say no solution. This answer is no solution. Right? So if you kept going, you did a lot of work, and if you did all that work correctly, and you double-checked it, because you need to double-check your answers on, on equations. You've got to plug them back in and see if they work. So when you do double-check them, you should realize that none of them work. But... It's pretty simple. Whenever it's isolated and it equals a negative number, like negative 8, you should just say no solution. Okay? This guy right here, 56% accuracy. This one was writing the absolute value and equality represented above. So if we look at this guy, we needed to remember that formula on how to write absolute value um, inequalities. And let's begin by writing it down. Here it is. It's the absolute value of x minus a number. And then in here, we're going to put an inequality. It might be a less than, might be a greater than. And then over here, we're going to have another number. Okay? What number belongs in here? That is the midpoint. I hope we remember that. The midpoint. Right in there. Which, in this case, if you look at this number line, going 1n, 1n, that's negative 3. So... When you plug that in, it has to be exactly that value, negative 3. Negative 3 goes right in there, which means that the minus minus on your final answer will change to a plus, right? I think that was uh, the number one mistake that most people made. Um, then you got to determine the greater than symbol or the less than symbol. And if the areas are apart, if it's a greater, then it's a, a greater than symbol if, the, if they're apart. But if these are together then it's a less than symbol, okay? So once again, greater is apart, less than between here and here, less than is together. So this is obviously a less than symbol. And if you notice the dots, they're both solid, so you're gonna need a solid line underneath that inequality. And the last one over here will be the distance, distance from point to midpoint, okay? So, yeah, from here to the middle is 2, or from here to the middle is 2. So there's your answer that you should have typed in or should have selected. The absolute value of x plus 3 is less than or equal to 2. So on this one, 
uh, 11 students got it wrong, 23 got it right. So a lot of us got it right, but yeah, a big handful still got it wrong. I think it's worth going over. Let's check it out. Um, right here, we have two inequalities separated with the word or. So what we're going to do is solve them. So to get rid of that minus 3, we go plus 3. We do to one side, do to the other, plus 3. We have 2x is greater than 18. That's really a 2 times x is greater than 18. So you're going to divide by 2 to get rid of the multiplication of 2. You will have x is greater than 9. Other one, we have, we have to get the x by itself. So we need to get rid of the 3 first and then the multiplication of negative 7. Getting rid of the 3 first, we're going to subtract 3, subtract 3. We're going to have negative 7x is less than 14. And that's really saying negative 7 times x is less than 14. So get rid of the multiplication of negative 7 by dividing by negative 7. What you do to one side, do to the other side. You will have x, and you do flip the inequality because you divide it by a negative, and you do end up with a negative 2 over here. And we do have the word or right between there. Okay. So the question is, do we write our answer like this? Well, if you graph it, and the areas are apart, going that way and that way, then yeah, you would write both with the word or. But if they're overlapping, it's a special case, and you got to think about which one is the correct answer. So let's graph them to determine how do we write our answer. We're going to put the smaller number on the left side, the bigger number on the right side. We're going to graph this one in red. X is greater than 9, greater than that way. We're going to graph this one in blue. X is greater than negative 2. Greater than is also that way. Okay. Now, whenever you have the word or, it's going to be the first one going in that direction. Because the reality is, anytime you graph these compound inequalities, there's three areas. There's the left side, there's the middle, and there's the right side. On the left side, do you have a red or a blue one over here on the left side? No, you don't have a red or blue. You don't have any. Right here, do you have a red or blue? Yeah, we have a blue. So it starts, th this starts satisfying this statement of one or the other. It starts satisfying it to the right of, of negative two. So what's my answer? My answer is x is greater than or equal to, I mean, not, x is greater than negative two, not greater than or equal to, I'm sorry. X is greater than negative two. That's the only thing you type in, right? So let me explain this one more time. The word or, it means something that it could be one or the other. So if I said, if you have uh, blue jeans or white shoes stand up, that means that it doesn't, you don't have to have both. It's just one or the other. And since we have an area here, if you look at the left side, is there one or the other? Is there a blue or red line right here on this side, on the left side? No. Is there a blue or red line right here? Yes, right? So the word uh, or, it starts getting satisfied right here at negative two this way. Now, if this would have been the word and, then it has to specifically be both. So if I said, if I said uh, stand up if you have blue jeans and white shoes, it's not one or the other. If I say and, it has to be both. So if you have the word and right here, it would be this one, x is greater than 9, because that's from here this way is where you have both the blue and the red. Or is just one of them, right? So if it's going to the right, it's going to be that first one going in that direction. If they were both going to the left, like let's say we just had some random ones going this way with the word or then the red one would be the first one in that case make sense if it says and it's where they both are at the red and the blue and red and the blue okay if it's or it's just the first one going in that direction because that's where it starts satisfying one or the other okay moving on this is very related to the most recent one we did it says you have those two answers. Let's say you were working on a complex problem that had the word and between it, compound inequality separated with the word and, and we solve it. How are you going to present your answer? Well, if you have x is less than 1 and x is less than 5, and you go to a number line and you put the smaller number on the left side, the bigger number on the right side, graph 1 in red, x is less than 1, less than this way, X is less than 5, less than this way. It has the word and between it. 
So you got your three areas, the left side, the middle, and the right side, okay? You got two points, two numbers. You have the left side, you have the middle, and you have the right side. On the right side, do you have both the red and the blue? Do you have both the red and the blue? No. In the middle, do you have both the red and the blue? No, you only have one. Over here on the, on the left side, do you have both the red and the blue? Over here, yes. So what's your only answer going to be? X is less than one, this guy right here, okay? Because that's where they're both at, both the red and the blue. They're both right here from the one to the left, okay? If you look at the multiple choice answers, I wrote them together as a compound inequality. That'd be incorrect. Uh, I wrote one of them, the other, but this is the, the correct answer. X is less than one. Only where both of them are at, the red and the blue, X is less than one. All right, it's already been long enough. But I hope uh, this helps you get prepared for the retake. So please come in after school Monday to do so.